I'd like to I'd like to just cover a little bit of the ground that I wanted him to cover. <laughs> so I'll do that instead. <laughs> so um, we've talked about uh, um, ergonomics, physical. We've talked about uh, suggestions for uh, how things we can do things differently. Dr. Hanna has uh, just dealt with the with the very important issue of does our well-being and safety ultimately impact on on patient well-being and safety. And I want to talk a little bit about uh, the uh, mental uh, uh, workload uh, stress that surgeons suffer. So again, just a little bit of background. This is a study uh, uh, published by Lou uh, a few years ago in the archives of surgery. And he pointed out uh, what the surgeon uh, manpower, if you would, uh, numbers for the country have been over the last uh, two decades. So in uh, 1981, there's about seven and almost eight general surgeons per 100,000 population. And this uh, data uh, comes from the venerable uh, medical journal, the Wall Street Journal. Um, uh, so this is tracked um, by our financial uh, brethren. And uh, so 10 years later, it's about seven uh, per 100,000. And five years ago, we dropped down to five per 100,000. That's about a 25% decline in surgical workforce over the past 25 years. And uh, they further stated there's a 5% rate of us who are now uh, working as itinerant surgeons. I would suggest that's a very conservative estimate of the, of the percent that are now working more itinerantly or part-time. Uh, and so Lou went on to project that between 2000 and 2020, population will increase by about 18%, but because of the nature of that population increase and the aging of the population, the workload of general surgeons will actually increase by closer to 31 uh, or 32%. Now, an even more sobering, here's a, here's a, a graph that he depicted in that archives paper. <coughs> the dotted line, uh, sorry, the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the straight line is that workforce, force, the workload increase um, with our current workforce in place. Um, if you were to increase our workforce as surgeons by 10% today, <clears throat> this would be the effect, <clears throat> excuse me, 10 years down the road, or when he did this, 15 years down the road. If you increase our workforce by 20% today, there's still, you can see with the triangle line, we fall far short. <clears throat> excuse me, of the ideal workload uh, down the road. Can I just have a drink of water? Thank you. <coughs> excuse me. Things are conspiring to not get this uh, presentation. <coughs> now, some, some, uh, some other kind of sobering data <coughs> on surgeons. Apparently, um, uh, we divorced at a very alarming rate, eclipsed only by our psychiatric uh, colleagues. Um, <coughs> Uh, the uh, uh, male physicians, not just surgeons, have a disproportionately high uh, rate of uh, self-inflicted injury, and this is a, this is a very sobering uh, piece of data. Fifteen percent of all surgeons. And this isn't this isn't uh, um, uh, sifted out into different specialties, but fifteen percent of all si physicians end up in some situation of substance abuse or impairment. Um, <coughs> And just to add to this cheery uh, uh, bit of uh, background data, the physicians most sued, as you see here, are overwhelmingly uh, proceduralists, surgeons and uh, proceduralists. So um, uh, the background, where we're starting from, isn't exactly a, a, a picture of uh, glimmering health. Um, now we talked a little bit about stress, and stress speaks to the bodily processes resulting from circumstances and, and that place physical and psychological demands on an individual. Uh, <clears throat> this isn't all bad, because um, some stress, as we know, uh, enhances and facilitates performance. The problem is when the demands outweigh uh, our resources to cope. Uh, definitely, our ability to cope is a hallmark of expertise, and uh, uh, there's no substitute for the years that we put in uh, as, as surgeons in that experience. Uh, and, and one of the themes I think you've heard from today is that uh, this stress is, is significantly under-acknowledged in our community. Now, um, burnout, when you want to uh, look at burnout, burnout's characterized <coughs> by emotional exhaustion, a sense of depersonalization, decreased sense of personal accomplishment. Now some of these things I'm going to uh, talk about over the next couple of minutes are going to be uh, fairly uncomfortable uh, and will uh, resonate disturbingly uh, uh, with us. Um, <coughs> it's a syndrome that affects those who work, whose work involves constant demands, intense interactions, and folks who are needy, uh, folks who have emotional and, and physical needs. And this is our workplace. This is, this is what we do. 
and uh, this is manifest with the following symptoms. We uh, start treating patients and colleagues as objects. We feel emotionally depleted. We're exhausted. Uh, we're sent, we become cynical. Sometimes guilt overrides a lot of what we do and decide and, and start feeling uh, ineffective. And, and this is the work that Volch has, uh, has published. <coughs> When you start looking uh, um, discreetly and yet um, deliberately at the uh, level of uh, burnout, meeting those objective criteria within our profession, again, some very disturbing data. Uh, in uh, Balch's study, 30 to 38 percent of all those uh, surveyed, uh, a study uh, that published by Greenfield uh, several years ago, 32 percent of American sur surgeons they surveyed. The Australians, 47 percent in the survey uh, for a few years ago from the uh, New, Ze New Zealand Journal, uh, Australian New Zealand Journal of Surgery, 32 percent of colorectal surgeons and vascular surgeons in the UK. So this is not a trifling uh, uh, marginal issue. Uh, and as you see here, um, <coughs> Uh, this list of uh, uh, factors that contribute uh, to burnout. We can relate to so many of them. As I say, this is a very uncomfortable thing to think and talk about. Uh, length of training, delayed gratification, the lack of control that we feel, the continual imbalance between uh, career and family, feeling isolated, uh, uh, um, inefficient, um, and sometimes hostile work environments, setting unrealistic goals of ourselves and having them sometimes imposed on us. So, um, so we live uh, and, uh, and operate functionally and literally in, in an environment daily where these factors come to bear upon us. Um, the, uh, this is a, a, an editorial uh, uh, opinion piece by uh, Campbell just uh, last year. Underpinnings of burnout, things we talked about, imbalance between work, family, personal growth, and loss of sense of meeting. And he talked about um, the, the institutional, the places that we work, the dysfunction uh, that affects us, <coughs> that we think is part of life, but that is, is usually not acceptable in most other workplaces. Um, we have felt as surgeons, without question, in increasingly a loss of control over um, our work and uh, uh, often feel that uh, um, the micromanagement of our work and practices, it reflects the lack of trust uh, in not just our competence but our, our integrity. Um, uh, the, there are conflicting values. As patient advocates, we're sometimes up against uh, uh, more mercenary um, uh, motivators of, of, of behavior and care. Um, and this is what uh, Dr. Hanna has uh, spoken about, so I'm not going to get back to uh, uh, spend time on the uh, effect of stress and performance. We'll talk that in a minute. But, um, but this was a, a study published in, I believe it was in JAXA last year. Um, <coughs> 7,900 survey uh, uh, surgeons uh, within the ACS surveyed uh, um, reported um, concern, so these were anonymous, obviously self-reports, that they'd made a major medical error uh, over the past three months. Now, um, surgeons, uh, these were surgeons, and we tend to uh, take responsibility, and 70% uh, and of these uh, surveyed uh, felt that the error uh, was an individual one rather than a system uh, error. Um, Interestingly, uh, the reporting of these errors was strongly related to surgeon burnout and mental quality of life. And uh, whenever symptoms of depression were reported, there was a particularly high correlation with the uh, relate of, uh, with, uh, related to the um, rate uh, of reported injury. Now, in this, in this study, and again, this was, this was last year, I believe, uh, sorry, in Annals, not in Jack's, um, uh, the frequency of call, interestingly, the frequency of call, the practice setting, the method of compensation, the hours worked was not associated um, with errors uh, as much as the um, uh, mental quality of life and the sense of burnout. Now, there have been, uh, there is literature now um, subsequent to this that suggests that, in fact, um, rates of call and uh, uh, beyond a particular threshold and, and hours worked, it can in fact uh, contribute to this. But uh, interestingly from this study, that was not the takeaway. The takeaway was that uh, we underestimate significantly the impact of our mental uh, well-being in terms of our judgment decision-making as surgeons. So uh, the way forward, uh, uh, one of the messages that uh, from my initial talk, uh, the data is so limited uh, and paltry, uh, and these relationships are poorly understood. Um, we need to, without question, cultivate habits of personal renewal. This isn't things that we as surgeons really kind of like to talk about or uh, think about a whole lot, but uh, 
um, uh, habits of renewal, uh, s self awareness, need to you know be better connected with colleagues and support systems, and uh, the uh, strong uh, message from uh, Balch's uh, piece two years ago was that avoiding uh, burnout is far more effective and preferable than uh, than reacting to it. Uh, getting ahead of it is is so much more important, and and that this is not a one and done. Uh, maintaining uh, healthy habits really is uh, is the work of a lifetime. Now I'm going to stop there and um, uh, <laughs>